Hello everybody and welcome back today I'm going to teach you how to do the impulse grenades from Fortnite I've seen that this game is just popping off and I said let's try to do a mechanic from that game so if you are going to enjoy this video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of my content so let's begin as you know uh, in Fortnite if you use an impulse grenade you're going to go in one of the directions that you are faced to the grenade so you're just pretty much going to jump if the grenade is right in front of you. So let's say this O is the grenade. Uh, when it's going to detonate, you're going to launch back, jumping a little bit. And if I'm on top of it, uh, more in the sky. And if I'm in this direction, then backwards. So I think you got it. So let's begin here. I have the impulse grenade. Nothing in there yet. I'm going to set this up with you. Here is only a sphere, uh, which you're going to need to go to simulate physics, which is basically going to enable the gravity and all that good stuff. So now if I disable that and go to simulation, you see, nothing is going to happen. But if I go and enable simulate physics, now this is going to fall in the ground. That's what we want because it's a grenade. Okay, then here nothing special, only an input action fire. Uh, you can get this, uh, this is the template of the first person. In order to get the input action, go to project settings. Uh, okay, let this load, go to input, and here and at action mappings, click on this plus, uh, type its name, mine is fire, go here, left mouse button or whatever key you want, make sure you know the name of the key. Okay, so let's get in here. So from pressed, we need to get an spawn actor from class. In the class section, we need to get impulse grenade. Okay, in the spawn transform, we're going to make a transform. So what it does, every time you're going to press the left mouse button or the key that you have, is going to spawn the impulse grenade. And the make transform node is going to set the location of the grenade, where it spawns the rotation and the scale. So, here we need to get the first person camera and get the forward vector, okay? And we need to multiply this by a float value. So basically, uh, I think 2000 is, is a pretty good amount. So basically what this does, you are going to get the forward vector, which means the line that is pointing in the direction that we are looking at. So if I get here an arrow and I plug the arrow into the first person camera and drag the arrow right here. If we are going to, so basically the arrow is the front, is the, what's it called, the forward vector. So basically now if I rotate the camera, you see the arrow is rotating with the camera and that is the forward vector. And we are multiplying this by a float. That's the amount of, actually no, we need to multiply this by 100. This is, uh, how far from the camera point, which is somewhere in the center right here at the start of the arrow, is going to go. So 100 is somewhere about here or here. I don't really know, but this should now work. Okay, so as you can see, it is not working. Let's see why. So, okay, let me just delete this. Let's see if this is the problem. Okay, everything should be all right. Okay, so it is not spawning. Let me see why. So if I print a string, to, just to see if I'm, it is going to spawn, it, if it is reaching this node here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, as you can see, it is reaching it. But why isn't it? Okay, what if I get world location? Okay, and now this should work. Oh, yeah, I think it's working. Yeah, uh, it is actually working, as you can see. Uh, but we have a problem. As you can see, if I am going to spawn one while I'm moving, I'm going to get blocked by the grenade. There's a little bit of stutter in between the movement and the spawning. So, this is where the forward vector comes in handy. From here, we get the forward vector. You get forward vector. As I said, multiply this by a float. Okay, so here we have it. 
let's see 100 and we need to add these values up so that is going to let us spawn it as i said a little bit uh, forward on the arrow okay so let's see if this works now okay so as you can see it's spawning right in the front uh, that happened because okay so here uh, so the bounciness of it is because we are spawning it and it's going to collide with other objects as well so let's see if we put here 2000 uh, 200 okay yeah now it is working this won't be happening after we do the next part so let me delete this pre-string so this spawn the, spawns the grenade and this says the location of the grenade get the world location of the camera so it is going to spawn in front of him but if it's not added with the fourth vector multiplied by, by 200 it is going to block him so this is what i've done here then we need to promote this to a variable so we can access its, va its variables or location or whatever through this variable that we are creating right now. So I'm going to name this imp impg. Okay. And from here we need to add impulse to the sphere. So basically what it does, it's going to bounce the grenade as soon as it spawns in front of us. So again get the first person camera get forward vector multiply this by float okay let's say 2000 plug this into the impulse and don't forget to check the velocity change which is going to affect the velocity of the grenade so it's going to be faster when it is going to be slower when it spawns faster after some time Okay, so now, as you can see, when it's spawning, it's going in front of us. That's because of the impulse. But it's a little bit too slow. Oh, actually, no, because I haven't checked that velocity change. It's slow. Now, as you can see, this is faster, a lot faster. So that's what the velocity change does. Okay, so this is the add impulse part. But... At this point, the grenade doesn't do anything, actually, so we need to set it to launch our character in space or whatever. So, in order to do that, we need to go into our impulse grenade, go into event graph, and here we need to get event begin play, so this node is going to fire once it is spawned in the level. Okay, so from here, we need to drag a delay, so we're not go it's not going to... To fire as soon as it is spawn, we need a delay. As you know, in Fortnite, we you have like three takes that somewhere about one second uh, after it is spawned to detonate. Okay, from completed, we need to get a multi sphere for objects. So let me set this up, and I'm going to show you what it does. So here we need to get a sphere, get word location. Plug this to the start, plug this into end, make the radius, let's say, 6000, I mean 600, to the debug, uh, draw debug type, go to for duration, and in the objects types, make this make array, and here we need to get world dynamic and world, uh, actually pawn. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what this does. So, as you can see, Two seconds have passed, let me make this a little bit less so we can see this faster. Okay, so after one second, it's going to create a sphere which radius is 600 units. In this radius, the sphere is going to check for objects that are pawns or dynamic objects. And the sphere and the get world location is basically when this is going to fire, is going to get the sphere location that's why when you see here there's a, there's the center that's center and all that stuff so basically it sets the location of the of where the sphere spawns okay from here we need to get return value plug this in here so basically if we are going to hit a world dynamic or a pawn we are going to fire this uh, this branch. So if you're going to hit one of these, 
is it going to be true? If it's not going to hit any of these, it's going to be false. Okay, then from out hits we need to get what's it called for each loop. So this node is going to check for every every actor that we have hit here, which is going to be a world dynamic or a pawn. And from array element we can get a break hit result. So as I've said in one of my tutorials, the break hit result is going to let us get what we have hit. Three star, three sand, normal, impact normal, and all that stuff. Okay, so from hit actor, we need to cast the first person character, plug the loop body in here, and as first person character, we we need to make a little bit of math right here. So get world location of the first person camera. Make this look nice so you can see this better, alignment and certain connection. Then we need to get from the sphere, get world location. Oh, I think we can get it only, like we can get this like this as well without the sphere. Okay, then here we need to do a vector minus, minus vector. So plug this in the first node, plug this in the second node. Okay, so what this does is going to make the difference between the sphere location at the moment that this node fires and between the sphere and the first person character. So from here we need to get a normalized node. This is a node that is going to make the value of the vector 1 and keep the direction the same. So let's see, if our direction would be towards the this wall towards this wall then uh, our vector would be one and the direction would be pointing right here okay from this one if I can get it we need to get okay wait so it's a bit blocked from here we need to get a float a vector multiplied by a float I'm going to type here let's say Okay, 1500 and we need to get a branch out of here in the condition we are going to plug a node called on ground is moving on ground so we are going to check if we are either right now on the ground or we are falling or jumping or all that stuff so let's say if I will get up here and I would be falling it is not going to be on the ground so plug the return value into the condition and if this is true get a launch character but we need to get it from a first person character or whatever yours is named so launch character plug this in here copy it one more time so this node is going to like basically it's like the impulse that we have done to the grenade but we can't use that here okay then let me put this a little bit backwards and here we need to split the struct pin here split the struct pin and here split the struct pin so we can change the velocity of each axis as we want so if this is on the ground we are, if we are moving on the ground we need to put here I don't know let's say 1000 if we are not moving on the ground, let's say 1,300, that's because when we fall, there's a the gravity that is applying to us, and we need to defeat this um, this force by adding a little bit more from if we are standing still on the ground, because if this would be only 1,000 as the first is then we would launch a little bit less than this one because the gravity is going to do its job okay then we need to plug the x to the x the y to the y we need to grab one more of these plug the return value in here and here we need to get 1000 i think that's the right value okay 
So we need a, a slower value because they are already moving in the air. Okay, so here uh, I made a mistake. It's an error. If you follow me, you should get one as well. That's because we need to get our sphere and that is my bad and I'm sorry for that. Now if we compile, everything is all right. Okay, let's see if this is working. So if we stay in the, in the sphere, it is going to affect us and that is us we want is the effect that we want it to get and if you in the air don't have this much control over your character go into the character here on up on the blueprint go to character movement and here you have air control if you set up this to 10 you're just going to be flying so as you can see i can move this really well and you can see sometimes the sphere is red. That's because it doesn't get any actors that are upon or world dynamic. If we go here, it's not going to get that as well. And, all, and that's right, that's what we need. So yeah, I hope you like this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. If you didn't understand something or I've said something wrong, please leave it in the comments below and I'll try to answer that as soon and as good as I can. So yeah, I want to remind you that I have a Twitter where you can follow me, where I post updates and all that stuff. I'm going to continue making these kind of series where I'll do mechanics from Fortnite. I think next time I'm going to do C4, mine and, and uh, how to detonate that as well. And maybe I'll do how to do buildings and all that stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.